gonna go over two of the main attributes that the pendulum has that are kind of unique to the pendulum um, that a whole lot of other exercises and squats and things don't have. So it's like one of the reasons why, if you guys have heard me talk for a minute, watch some of my quad exercise videos, obviously I like free weight squats, I like hack squats, I love pendulum squats. Um, and again, the nicest part about pendulum, it's probably the machine that needs the least like altercation to make it badass and efficient. So before I get into that, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, all that stuff you're supposed to do uh, to help my channel out. And before you all ask, why am I breathing hard? Why am I sweaty? Look at this sweat. I just worked out. I film these videos after I work out. I film them during my workout. I don't got time to get all pretty like the rest of you influencers out there. I see some of these guys, their hair is all perfect. No drops of sweat anywhere. I got to go right from here to the car line in my minivan and pick up the kids. So that's my hashtag baller shit that I'm doing. So you got to put up with my sweat, my unkempt uh, appearance just in general. I haven't groomed today or look in the mirror, but I'll talk about some pendulum squats. So hopefully that's what you're here for instead of something not pretty to look at. So the two things I want to show, number one, I want to show how this has a built in awesome profile. So again, everybody has talking about profiles. Everybody feels some feels when I put a band on a hack or something and just say, why well, you don't need to do that, blah, blah, all this kind of stuff, or that's just a tool, you don't need to overuse it. <laughs> Maybe there's a time and a place um, for kind of altering profiles, but all our things being the same, in my opinion, it's an argument for efficiency. So again, your body, as you go through a squatting type motion, joints stack with the line of force. As they stack with the line of force, moment arms get shorter, torque decreases at the joint, even though the weight stays the same. If that's complicated, I've got a video on that explaining that pretty uh, clearly on my page. We'll link it right here. Trevor will link it right somewhere that I'm pointing. Um, so again, I, I hate to talk about torque and moment arms and force because people are like, oh, this is like nerdy shit, blah, blah. I'm trying to not make it nerdy, but that's what your body receives. Your body doesn't know just weight. It knows torque at joints and muscles manage torque at joints. And again, moment arms and weight, when there's an equation, an actual equation, when you multiply those two together, you get torque, they are of equal importance. So again, if you have any idea, if you write down your weight in a logbook, you have to have at least some idea of what the hell a moment arm is. So anyway, the common sense version of that, if you don't wanna watch that whole video, is everyone knows squats are way easier at the top. That's because given the same load, you have way less torque at the joints because of those smaller moment arms. It is way harder at the top, even though it's the same weight, even though comparing six inches range of motion at the top, six inches range of motion at the bottom, there's a reason that six inches at the bottom is harder. So from an efficiency standpoint, those moment arms are gonna to stack to a certain degree on every squat pattern, there's no way around it. But if you can make it heavier at the top, it's gonna to better match what your body is capable of doing. So instead, as the load stays the same and the moment arms decrease, or as the moment arms decrease, if you can increase the load, it'll keep the torque at the train joints more consistent. Again, all that seems like a whole lot of mess. It's not really that hard. And the most important thing is if you know what hard training feels like, um, you can just tell when you're doing something with a better profile, it's harder through the entire range of motion. So on hack squats, on any type of free weight squat, the weight stays the same the entire time. So the actual um, resistance profile of the exercise is flat, despite what some people will say. It does not change. The resistance profile is the loading pattern. If the load stays the same, the resistance profile is the same. It's flat. So 400 pounds on your back is 400 pounds on your back. The load doesn't change. The thing that changes is the strength profile, which is what your body brings. So the thing I love about pendulums is it increases the torque as you come to the top. It increases the load because the moment arm increases. So again, the moment arm from the bottom compared to the top, the moment arm gets longer at the top. So even though um, it's the same weight, it will feel way, way harder at the top. Um, and so how I'm gonna show this is with lines of force first and basically the thing that changes is the moment arm. So this is basically the moment arm here. They happen to be parallel. The lever of the machine, which is not always the same as the moment arm, is right here. And so in this case, the, how you find the moment arm is you draw the line of force, which again, as long as you're using plates and stuff is always gonna be straight down. And the moment arm is the place where the axis of rotation is closest to that point. So again, if you drew this line, this distance is the moment arm. Moment arm is a distance. It is a 90 degree angle to that line of force, which is also the same thing as the closest point to that force. And so this is why all our things being the same. If I literally took a little scale in the shoulder pad, so this is me sitting in here smiling because I'm at the top and the top's easier. But if I actually put a little scale measuring the shoulder pads, because the moment arm is longer, you multiply the weight that's on there by that moment arm, you'll actually get a heavier weight in the pad. It will not only feel heavier at the top, it is heavier at the top. So if we go down here and we go to the bottom position, and I did my best to actually make sure this angle's about right, that this lever arm is actually the same. Some of the other stuff might be slightly off because, hey, you get what you pay for, this is free. 
Um, and so here is again the line of force, always the same, right through the center of that plate where it's on the machine. And now we're doing the same distance again. So we're doing where this line is closest, also a 90 degree angle, and you go right here. And so all you have to do is, let's say we've got 90 pounds of plate on here, 90 pounds of plate on here, that's part of the equation. You multiply it by moment arm and you figure out how much torque you are actually getting. So again, this you'll see is probably 50% bigger. So it's literally gonna be 50% heavier at the top than the bottom. So that is one of the reasons why pendulum squats are awesome. It has a built-in good profile, a built-in good resistance profile. Where again, a hack squat, it's the same weight the whole time. Here, it literally gets heavier as you come to the top. Um, and so again, um, I'm not, obviously, hopefully you can figure out I'm not pooping hack squats, I'm not pooping normal squats. Again, can you get huge legs doing hacks without bands? Of course. Can you get huge legs doing just free weight barbell squats and not ever having a machine? Of course. But again, the more advanced you get, the further along your journey you get, I would make the argument, um, the more efficiency becomes important. And again, I have a hard time getting around how this is more efficient. If you're gonna travel through a range of motion, you're gonna do this squat pattern thing, you're gonna move up and down X distance, you might as well challenge your muscles as much as they're capable of through the entire range of motion. I'm gonna take a pause. I'm gonna erase some of this stuff so it's prettier. I'm gonna talk about one more thing that is a, a unique advantage that I haven't heard a whole lot of people talk about um, with the pendulum squat that can have, uh, again, a little advantage over the hack squat when comparing the two. All right, guys, so the other thing that I wanna discuss here and erase some stuff, so again, even though I've got the same red color here, the red is no longer lines of force. I'm just comparing two different angles at two different points in the range of motion. So I've talked about this before. People kind of ask what makes a good hack squat. Um, and there's a lot of different things, but one of the most important things is basically the angle of the sled, the back sled, the track the thing actually moves on relative to the foot platform. And that's hugely important. And that's why you'll see some companies have figured out the ability to change that angle is very important. And the main reason that's important more than anything else, it does change the actual direction of the line of force a little bit, but that's for a separate video. But the main thing again, so this is back pad sled, this is where you're putting your feet. The more closed this angle gets, the more ankle mobility requirements you have. So again, as this closes up, basically you can imagine if this changes and goes this way, you know, you're basically being forced into dorsiflexion. So you need a lot of dorsiflexion. So sometimes on a bad hack, they'll have this angle very closed up and people will just get on it and be like, oh, this just feels like crap. Sometimes it feels like crap in the ankles. Sometimes if you don't notice how bad your ankles are, then it just goes to the knees and it just hurts your knees more. And basically as this angle opens up, you basically have less ankle mobility requirements, less dorsiflexion required, and generally it makes it easier to get to depth because your knees have to go forward. For your ankles to basically dorsiflex, your knees have to go forward. And again, that's the main thing that makes it very quad dominant, helps you hit depth. But again, your ankles are the things that allow that. So that is good uh, up to a certain point. Obviously, if you open that angle way too steep, then at some point in time, it's like your feet are just gonna wanna slide right off the platform. So there's this kind of magic spot. Again, if you definitely don't want the worst is again a hack where that angle is too closed. And then um, there's a point where there's kind of that magic sweet spot in there. I've never actually measured what the exact angle is. I should do it someday out of curiosity. But if you go too open, then it gets way more of this almost kind of like, there's a lot of friction, a lot of coefficient of friction that can lead to a lot of compressive force at the patellofemoral joint. But again, that's a different thing. So you don't have to know all that shit, but the cool thing that happens on a pendulum is if you look at the angle here. So again, because this thing is not on a sled or a track and because it arcs, you can look at what happens to the angle. So again, if we're doing that comparative thing, this is basically the same thing as the track of a hack. This is what your body's on. This is the track of the sled. And you can see in the start position, this angle is extremely close. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's 35 degree angle or something. So it's a very closed up angle. And as you go into the bottom, and this whole thing pivots, the back pad relative to the foot platform, which doesn't change, basically goes from more vertical to more horizontal. And as that happens, this angle essentially opens. So it goes from being a more closed ankle to a more open angle. You can imagine if this was up here, so again, if this stayed the same from here, this is where it was in the start position, you can imagine my knees would have to be here, somewhere like that, so an angle relative to match here, in which case my shin would have to be much more forward attached to that knee, and I would require a whole lot more dorsiflexion or ankle mobility. But because this angle opens, so again, when I say angle opens, again, imagine this is somewhere around, what did I say? Maybe it's not 35, maybe more like 40 degrees, whatever, 45, doesn't matter. 45 degrees, this is obviously closer to 90. So this is a bigger angle, a more open angle, which again, pulls your 
femur back, pulls your tib back, and basically makes the change of, you know, having this nice big angle here, not requiring a ton of dorsiflexion. Where again, if I had the same thing, this is pulled forward, my shin might have to be here, and I would have to go through more range of motion and more dorsiflexion to get to the bottom. So that is one nice advantage of this compared to the hack. If you do hacks and you just feel like your biggest limiting factor is your ankles, like you just try to go to the bottom, your heels come up, your feet peel around, you just can't feel like you keep them planted, then a pendulum squat can be a very good option uh, because again, it makes ankles generally not the limiting factor on the exercise. So it's a very cool machine for hitting depth. There's very few people that can't hit depth on this where you could have a very real excuse on something else. So again, everybody just says you either hit depth on everything or you suck. Um, and the reality is those are generally people, the people that say that are people that have femurs this long um, and crazy ankle mobility and they can just squat pretty in anything. But for you long femur McGee's out there, which is a lot of people I know, a lot of people I train with, I joke my wife is long femurs McGee, then all this shit is just not gonna be as easy and clean as pretty. You're gonna have the short femur people making fun of your squat form and they just don't understand mechanics. So if you're walking around with some long femurs, don't feel bad. I'm gonna make a team all femur shirt and you can justify why squats suck for you. But even if you're on team all femur, pendulum squats will be your saver because again, this is one of the few times where your femur length will not really limit what you're capable of doing as far as depth. Um, so again, hopefully, like I said in the beginning, um, if you've seen my gym, I have a hack squat right behind here. I'm standing next to it. There's my pendulum, here's my hack. I have free weights over there. I have a safety squat bar, I front squat. I've got quite a few videos of doing it. All squats are awesome, all of them have a place, um, but again, really when you get into the matter of efficiency, you know, adjusting the profile on a hack, using bands is a great option, and pendulums are just sweet because you don't have to do anything. They already basically have a built-in good profile. They're also very ankle mobility or lack of ankle mobility friendly, and just an all-around awesome exercise for training the quads through their near full contractile range with a load that matches what your body's capable of doing. If that was helpful, please like, subscribe, thumbs up. If you have some questions, comments, concerns, hit me below. And as also always, if you're feeling some feels, leave those in the comments below as well too. I'm here to help and make you feel better. So until the next one, guys, enjoy.